Hello and welcome back to High Desert Gardening. I'm Jay Bell and today I'm taking shelter in the shade and my new greenhouse. If you've ever spent any time in Albuquerque, you'll be familiar with how crazy intense our sun can be. You can begin to burn here in as little as five minutes. Spend a day in the sun, even with sunscreen, and you could wind up looking like a lobster. Today's episode isn't about our skin, but we will be talking about ultraviolet rays and how they affect living tissue. Also, why the sun is so much more intense in Albuquerque, what sunburn looks like on leaves, and how you can protect your vegetable garden from fiery death. Because in Albuquerque, full sun doesn't actually mean full sun, unless you're a high desert plant. Let's get started. Albuquerque is 5,300 feet above sea level. That means you'd be looking down at a mild drop to the ocean if we were next to it and, you know, actually had water and stuff. But that also means that we're one mile closer to the sun than someone on the coast. Less atmosphere means less buffer against the UV. So generally speaking, you'll see six to 10% increase in UV intensity for every 1,000 feet of elevation. And we've got five of those thousands. The US government tracks this through something called the UV index. That ranges from one to 11 or higher. Albuquerque is pretty much always an 11, and there are maybe a handful of places around the US that have a similar index rating. In other words, it's a little like living somewhere where there's a magnifying glass concentrating the sun between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. We humans have help. We can move to the shade, we can put on sunblock, we can put on shirts with sleeves. Plants can't move, right? And we don't want to slap them with sunscreen. Please don't put sunblock on your plants. Pretty much the only thing plants have that can combat UV is cuticles. No, not the ones on your fingernails. The cuticle of a plant is actually the outermost layer of tissue on a plant's stems, fruit, and leaves. Basically, you can imagine it as the plant's skin because its job is a lot like the job that our skin has, protection. It helps keep in moisture, keep out bad chemicals and disease, and helps block radiation. If you've ever heard someone tell you to harden off a plant before planting it outdoors, what they're actually talking about is helping the plant to understand that it needs to build up its cuticle layer. Just like our skin needs time to build up concentrations of melanin to protect us from instaburns, the plant needs time to sense the increase in UV so that it can increase its cuticle layer. It's foliar sunscreen. Without it, the plant cells will sustain sunburns and then begin to die off. Sunburn on a plant can look like bleaching on the top surface of a leaf or even the stems or even the fruit. It is possible for a plant to survive being burnt like this, but success rates on this will depend on how tender and young the plant you're growing is. Cilantro might get cooked to death, but an older tomato or squash plant will probably rebound with only a slight delay in production of fruit by weeks. It's best to avoid sunburn at all though, because a healthy plant is a happy plant and will make more fruit more readily. Hardening off is as simple as setting your plant out in a shady spot for maybe two hours on day one maybe three to four hours on day two and three, you can actually increase it maybe up to day four and five, you know, eyeball it. If the plant looks droopy at all, bring it inside, give it a little bit of a rest. It just needs a break. As it gets stronger and acclimates, it will manage the change to outdoors better and better. By day three or four, you should be able to leave it outside in the shade all day and night. I like to wait until I see new leaf growth to know that my plant is confident about its survival and a shifting focus to growth and not just trying to hang in there. Remember to water your plants more often when they're outdoors though, especially if it's windy. So now you might be able to guess why full sun doesn't actually mean full sun in Albuquerque. By the time July and August roll around, the combination of heat and the lack of moisture and the high UV index means that plants struggle just to stay alive. When a plant is struggling, it's not directing energy into reproducing, which is like making fruits and vegetables, but we can help our plants by providing them with partial shade. This part can be as complicated as you want it to be. You can spend a year observing the light and shadow in your yard. You can rotate your plants in accordance to the best natural shade that you get from structures and trees, or you can buy shade cloth. There aren't a lot of rules to this. I've seen people use mosquito netting, cheesecloth, sheets, tool. You can, of course, buy actual shade cloth, but if you do, make sure that you don't go above 30 to 50% rating. 
Shading your vegetable garden is probably one of the most important things you can do for your own sanity and for the production of food in your backyard. It helps to keep the roots cool and it actually may boost your food production during the hottest part of the year. Also less water use. Everybody loves less water use in the high desert. I do want to point out that this is not a cure-all though. Some plants just won't do well in our climate. Either it's the altitude or it's the sun. Maybe you love kiwi, but it's actually not going to survive our winters. We get too cold. It's also too dry and too hot, and our soil is probably too alkaline. But there are varieties of kiwi, like a hardy kiwi, that will survive. So it's worth asking questions and doing some research on other varieties. Even tomatoes will vary wildly by variety here. Lastly, I want to give you one tip on how to identify whether a plant is going to do better in our climate or worse. Basically, look at the leaves. Are they big and broad and smooth? Probably not going to do so well. The smaller, fuzzier, and thicker the leaf is, like a succulent, the better and more likely it is to be able to survive in our climate. For example, elephant ears. Big, smooth leaves, not really very good at handling the Mexico sun without lots of help. More of an undershaded type plant. Uh, you know, mine didn't do very well last year out in the heat. I probably had the wrong variety. Squash. It's actually native to our region, so they do really well here. They have big leaves, but if you look closely at them, they're fuzzy. The little hairs will help disperse the sunlight and heat and help keep moisture in. Rosemary. They have tiny leaves and they're needle-like. They're kind of almost like a succulent. These are actually meant to take full sun and they do very well here. Parsley. They have delicate, tender leaves and they're smooth. They'll do all right in spring, but they'll bolt, or basically they'll go to flower and then die and complete their life cycle as it warms up. So really it's best to plant them in spring and plant them in shade where they can survive a little bit longer into our warmer season, but don't expect to have it all summer. Basically, I want you to understand this rule so that you can have a basic understanding of when you need to look up whether a plant does well here. I mean, there's some really beautiful plants out there that have these beautiful tropical plants that you really would love to have, but they're really not going to do well. My bird of paradise, for example, has huge leaves. I bring it out in the summer and I leave it in dappled shade, but it will not survive in our cold weather in the winter. So I bring it in during the winter. There are exceptions to everything. So don't take what I say as gospel. It's just a guideline to help you begin to ask the questions when you need to. Feel free to ask any questions about any plants I didn't cover here in the comments below. If you're new to New Mexico, welcome. Remember to put on sunblock, a wide brimmed hat, and a shirt with breathable sleeves before you go out to garden. Oh, and water. Lots of water. Remember to like and subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when I post my next video about the fine art of watering in the high desert, and why you, or someone you know, is probably doing it wrong. Till next time.